It takes about four seconds to drop a bowling ball off the roof of the kingdom and have it hit the ground. Yet the ground shook for the major part of this was nine seconds, but still there was more after that. That's the equivalent seismic signal that was recorded for building two. And for building one, if you turn all of it but the bottom 20 stories to dust, you would get the seismic signal that was recorded, approximately. So all of this stuff in that height is unaccounted for. The towers, you know, Tower 1 had the same magnitude as the kingdom, but it's 30 times, that's 3 times 10, 30 times more potential energy, height and mass. So it should at least be more than that. <coughs> but the kingdom, you know, was a great, it was, you know, larger than these. For building seven, the seismic signal was equivalent to just the bottom two and a half stories. Houston, we have a problem. So now we're going to move on to some other aspects. Justification. So, some people think you have to use, you know, fancy uh, scientific -y sounding terms. Well, if you use a known a word that represents a known phenomenon, and you don't know what the phenomenon is, then you're, you're not being scientific. If you use uh, pulverized, no, that's kind of a grinding. The building really wasn't ground up, it was turning to dust in midair. We don't have a word for that. We've never seen it happen before. A new word is needed. And it also um, keeps you from biased observations. If you see all this dust in the air, whatever it is, this hazy stuff, the fume in the air, and you call it smoke, you're assuming fire to be the cause. And that causes you to bias your observations. So I deliberately pick words that you're not going to confuse with anything else. Sometimes I use uh, Cheetos. It's not food. And what do you, I think you call them what's-its here. It's just these things that look like Cheetos in the ground. They're obviously not Cheetos. You're not going to confuse it with it. But it's a placeholder for some odd characteristic until I discover what it really is. So dustification is a word I use to describe what happened to the buildings. We saw this picture before, how these steel columns, as they're falling, are trailing opaque amount of dust. Kind of looks like an Alka-Seltzer tablet. So I have often said that, you know, Alka-Seltzer is this rigid object until you drop it in a glass of water. It effervesces and dissolves. You change its environment. Well, steel is normally a rigid object. Maybe if you change its environment, it effervesces and dissolves. What happened to its environment? Something strange. Often people see these, uh, they call them squibs. I call them squirts. You can see it just kind of dissipates out there. It doesn't go very far. It can't be a bomb going off. It can't be an excess of the sound of, you know, speed, the, sound of um, the speed of sound. But one thing, a building this tall has water tanks every 10 or so stories. Because you can't pump water all the way to the top to 110th floor. A quarter of a mile up, there's too much of a head to pump against. So they pump it up in stages, like 10 floors at a time. So they have various water tanks all the way up. And you wouldn't want to use the corner office for that. It makes sense they would be in the middle of the, of the floor. And if you're turning the building into dust, water tanks are a pressure vessel. If you weaken the walls of that pressure vessel, at some point it's going to give way. It's not going to be able to hold in its pressure. I don't know for sure what this is, but that to me seems like it's the most likely. At regular intervals, you see these squirts coming out. To me, it looks like a bunch of water just cutting loose. But thinking about those squirts coming out, if it was air, you should have a whole lot more air coming out. If you get that building to the ground in eight seconds or nine and a half seconds, think about the, the time it takes to get all of the material inside pulverized, mixed with air, and squirt everything out of the way in order to get it down to nothing. That material's got to go somewhere. So if this is coming down at a speed of, uh, you know, for 
uh, down to the ground in, in like nine seconds, plus or minus, it has to squirt out of there. The average speed has got to come out of there faster than Mach 1 at this point. And actually the air from the center to get out of the way is like Mach 2.5 by the time it gets to the ground. So all of the adjacent buildings should look like they're machine gun fired from all this stuff coming out there faster than the speed of sound. It should make loud noises. But it was silent and there's very little squirting. We saw a few squirts coming out. We didn't see much else. But people said they heard explosions. Well, you put an egg in your microwave oven, they'll hear an explosion. Bombs do go boom, but not everything that goes boom is a bomb. <coughs> the firefighters have these air tanks that they wear when they go into smoky areas so they can breathe. <coughs> they were found to be exploding at street level. Interesting. Also, folks think that, okay, the building was wired up with bombs. I mean, you know, bombs in the building. If it was wired up, how are you going to coordinate all that wiring? And then folks will say, well, uh, it was remote controlled. Either way, have you ever been to a blasting zone? You know, blasting zone had to turn off cell phones and two-way radios. How do you get everyone in Manhattan to turn off their cell phone? Of every, any place in the world, I can't imagine a higher concentration of cell phones, except maybe Tokyo. But there were booms, and these Scott tanks were found to be exploding. There's quite a lot of testimony from the first responders. We don't need to read it here, but there's various comments about they're all letting go. They're all, you know, going boom. This one, particular one I like, is a boss asking, did you lose your vehicle, huh? Was it on fire? Fire what? We saw the sucker blow up. It went boom. His vehicle exploded. So here we're going to focus on the details of the dustification. There's going to be, you know, here's the northwest corner, there's going to be an object coming down. And we're going to look at it and see what it's doing. There's a steel beam, it's emerging soon. You'll see a trailing dust and then kind of turning, I think that's it. And you'll see it just kind of melted. Here it is. Yeah. Well, it's trailing the dust. Now watch it just disintegrate. You think of all that material coming off of it. There's nothing left to it. <coughs> this is the Verizon building, and we're going to go look on the ground right below there to see where the stuff should have landed. And you get big chunks here coming down. What is all that material trailing off of it? I wonder why there's no thud. And this is at full speed. And again, you see that chunk coming down. This turned to dust. So let's go down and look on the ground right below there where that stuff would have landed. <coughs> Judy, that's incredible. Yeah. That's yeah. incredible. And this was in front of everyone, but they were told collapse, so that's what they saw. Here's that Verizon building, and right there is where that stuff should have landed, in that intersection. There's paper and aluminum cladding. The steel structure had aluminum cladding covering it. And that is just a few pieces of all that's left. Why is the paper not burned? And notice the body language. This guy has his hands on his hips, arms folded, hands at the side. You can imagine the jaws probably hanging. They just come out of their hiding places to find the building's gone. Big 110 story building, you know, seeing sunshine. How could dust settle on it instantly? It hangs and you see it frothing up into dust. But this sequence here is really creepy. It starts off very crisp, crisp outline, and then pretty soon it, it's hazy. If this thing fell over, 
and, and <coughs> the folks who say that dust was so fine it hung in the air, how did it settle to begin with? Or you have another problem, the dust, coarse dust settled on it and became fine dust? <coughs> Whatever way you look at it, there's a problem. Even if you have a seven, this is 700 feet tall. If you have a 700 foot deep hole in the ground and drop that thing down, it wouldn't do this. If it fell over, it'd take out a few city blocks worth of buildings. You can see it on the ground. It's not there. It turns to dust in front of you. A view from the northeast. <coughs> see how crisp it is. Another word I like to use, poof, describes. And we'll look again at a close-up of this. See how it's it's very crisp around the edges. Also, how do you get dust landing on a vertical <coughs> column? I think that was right above where those guys survived. You can almost see the wires hanging out of it. What's left? Then it turns to dust. Here's something else. But see there's some columns there? And then they go missing. As it comes it, this is closer <coughs> to the ground. And you will also see over here where dust is shooting out at the ends of those beams. And, the, um, and it's starting to look like tissue paper. There's very little of that material that reached the ground. <coughs> Lather. I started out with this separate term, but I think it's a it's a form of the dustification. It just happens while the thing is stationary. You know the, the columns that are falling, trailing dust, they're also doing it in place, and I call that lather. This is the same as what's coming out of there, I think. One face and one face only, it's just coming out of the south side of that. Interesting that this is a different color, it's a different process. This is building seven, this is the north face. We're going to see this twice. That one face and one face only right here from ground to roof. There should be a traffic jam here. Then, you know, with the, if this is smoke winding down, if it's smoke wanting to get out, it would come out the windows, the broken open windows. Watch what it does. Kind of go low to the corner. The wind that day was six or seven, maybe eight miles per hour from the north. And you can see this is lightly wafting out here, but this is not lightly wafting out the window. It's not pushing its way out, it looks like it's being pulled out. We don't need to know how, we just need to notice the data. Notice the evidence. Kind of go low to the corner. 